Dear son, I'm writing this because we could never have this conversation in person. I just want to let you know how I feel about you and to tell you some of the things that often feel too awkward to say. I know our relationship hasn't always been the best through these years. I'm sorry for that. I hope you know how much I love you and how much I want the best of everything for you. I remember being your age and promising myself that I'll do a better job of being a dad than my dad did. I know he loved me, but there seemed to be something missing. He just didn't get me and what it was like to be a teenager. He did a great job of providing for us. We were wanting for nothing. But I knew in my teenage heart that I should somehow be a better dad than he was. I didn't know then how complicated being a dad could be. You don't remember. But when you were a little child, it was so easy to connect with you. From the start, you were always the bright spark in my life. It was so easy then to hug you and to let you know how proud of you I was. Coming in the door and getting a hug from you was like a breath of life for me at the end of a long day. We could sit and play or read and it was so easy to be together. Time is a strange thing. It's hard to appreciate what you have until you're looking back at it. Those days were gone and existed only in happy and bittersweet memories. How can happy memories make me so sad? Did I hug you enough back then? Did I really appreciate what I had? Probably not. Oh, to those little hugs again, those were the easier years to be a dad. You thought I was the greatest thing in the world. As you got older, you wanted to spend more time with your friends. I stopped being so smart in your eyes and slowly started becoming someone on the outside looking in. It got harder to get hugs, to express my feelings and to connect with you. The distance hurt some, but life is busy and complicated. Time kept marching on and life became a lot about getting you from one place to another for all your activities. I think during that time, I may have tended to focus more on the logistics and the daily grind. You were doing things on your own and facing the world with all of its challenges and dangers. I watched you succeed and fail, make mistakes and come out triumphant. You were still a shining light in my life. I shared your joy and triumph with you when you succeeded, but the harder part was letting you feel the pain of failing and making mistakes. Every pain in your life was a small pain in mine too. I still love you then as much as the day you were born. Did I show you that? Did I realize that? I'm not sure I did enough. These memories are more painful than those from when you were younger. I feel like there were some missed opportunities. You were finishing grade school. Family was still a large part of your life. Did I spend too much time worrying about my job and providing for my family? Was I focused on some of the wrong things when you asked me to come through the wall and I was too preoccupied with some pointless things and I told you, not now? What was I thinking? How could I be so stupid? Time cracked on whether I was ready for it or not. Your high school years have probably been the hardest for me and you. Then when the walls went up, somehow I went from being the world's greatest dad to being something that was standing between you and freedom. Did I act with too much justice or not enough mercy? Was I deaf to your cries for help as you struggled through these years? If this ever happened, I am so deeply sorry. That's not what I meant to do. Even though sometimes you made it your business to be as hard to love as you probably could, I still loved you as much as the day you were born. In fact, there was so much more to love in the man you were becoming. But the painful thing is that I had fewer 
and fewer ways to show you. Those done was we build. You will never know the number of prayers and petitions I made asking for wisdom, fortitude, and guidance. I remember when I was a teenager, how many hearts I had to wear to please all the people in my life. I had to become a good son, a good student, a good brother, a good worker, and a good friend, just to name a few. I remember feeling that it was so hard to please all these people. It was as though I had multiple personalities. Sometimes I didn't even know which one was me. Do you feel that sometimes? I never really showed any of them which one was the real me. I was afraid they wouldn't like some of the part. That's what I wanted to change when I became a dad. I wanted to be friends with my kids. At the time, it seems like such a simple solution. I was naive in this. As a teenager, I didn't realize that one of the most important parts of being a dad is to help guide your child, provide a roadmap for them, and to be that rock they know would always be there. My first job is not to be your friend, it is to be your dad. But I still so desire to be your friend. We have had some rough times. Things didn't always go as I planned, and I didn't always make the right course. When things went wrong, we ended up shouting and you told me you hated me. I sometimes wish I could hit the replay button like on the zombie game we used to play. If I could just relieve that moment, I would control my temper and take back some of the things I said or maybe try to see it from your point of view. By this point in my journey, hugs and affections have become nearly impossible. You think they are awkward and I probably don't try hard enough to break through your walls. How did I let this happen? What I found through the years of mistakes and missteps is that the same walls we put up to keep ourselves safe from others also block out God. Because we have free will, God doesn't just tear down the walls and hit us over the head with the right answers or the solutions to our problem. Instead, he lets the world stay in the place, but keep reaching out and loving us anyway. What I wanted you to know is that I love you so much. I always have and I always will. Just as there is not a way to make God stop loving you, there is nothing you can do to take away my love for you. I often think of God as a weaver and our life as a tapestry. If you've ever looked at a tapestry as it's been created, it is hard to tell what all those threads will yield. If you look at it from the backside, it's often ugly and discordant. One thing that my years have taught me is that in the moment it's happening, you may not understand the purpose of that particular painful thread that entered into your life. Giving distance and time, as well as the openness to God's hand, that thread can transform you into an even more beautiful creation than you already are. God is much better at weaving the fabric of our life than any dad can. In my goal of making you into a good, strong Christian man, I may have messed up this teaching. I am sorry for that. Know that I'm only a man and I make mistakes. I know that in the infinite power, God can use this for his good. Your life is just beginning. One day, you might want to be a dad. Although I try to be the best dad that I could be, I hope you are a better dad than me. It hurt my heart to know that there were probably times that you felt like I didn't love you enough, that you felt misunderstood, that I was unjust and just not paying attention. Will you please forgive me for that? Being a dad can at times seem painful and thankless, but it is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. I thank God every day that he's given me the blessing of having you in my life. I love you, son.